In this problem, we're told a car is traveling 50 kilometers per hour on a flat highway. If the coefficient of friction between the road and tires on a rainy day is 0.1, what is the minimum distance in which the car will stop? B, what is the stopping distance when the surface is dry and the coefficient of friction is 0.6? Right, so we have two different scenarios, one where it's raining, one where it's not. And right, we're given the coefficient of friction, right? And so we have this car traveling on this highway, and we're trying to find the stopping distances for both of them, right? So let's just go ahead and start with A. So for A, we know uh, the coefficient of friction, right, which I'll just call mu sub k. Right, so mu sub k is 0.1, okay? And so what we're trying to do is find the minimum stopping distance uh, the car will stop, right? So when they talk about minimum distance, right, we're solving for distance. So what that makes me uh, want to do, right, is use kinematics, right? Because we know the velocity, we know the final velocity, right? So we know v is 50 kilometers per hour, okay? We know the final velocity, right, is going to, or this is v sub zero, right, the initial. We know the final velocity is going to be zero, right, because it's going to rest. And then if we want to actually be able to solve for this, right, we also have delta x. If we want to go ahead and solve for this using these variables, we know we're going to need acceleration, okay? So we need to find the acceleration first if we want to actually be able to solve for the stopping distance, right? So what we need to do is find the acceleration, right, when, all right, when mu sub k is 0.1. So how do we do that? So the way we're going to do it, right, is by taking the sum of the forces in the extraction, okay? So the sum of the forces in the extraction, what are they going to be equal to, right? So it's going to be equal to ma, right? Because it's going to be slowing down and it's moving, uh, we know f equals ma, right? So sum of the forces just equal ma, okay? And then what are the forces in the extraction? So the only force we have acting on this thing is the force due to friction, right? So the force of friction, right, which we don't know. We don't know the force of friction, Right, so we don't know the force of friction, but we do know what uh, force of friction is equal to, right? So it's going to be equal to minus f sub f, right? Because f sub f, or the force of friction, right, is going it's going backwards, right? It's going this way, and that's why it's negative, right? Because we say right's positive, left's negative. So we know uh, negative force of friction equals ma, right? So what is the force of friction equal to? So the formula for force of friction is mu sub k times f sub n. And keep in mind what we're given. We know mu sub k, and we know what f sub n is. F sub n is just going to be mg, right? Because if you take the sum of the forces in the y right? It's just going to be equal to ma. You're, or you're just going to get f sub n equals mg, right? And that's just pretty obvious. It's, it's the only force in the y, so it just equals mg. So the force of friction, right? So if I move the minus sign over, it's just minus ma is equal to mu sub k times f sub n, which we went over was mg, right? And notice we're not given the mass, but luckily they cancel, right? The masses cancel. So minus a is just mu sub k times gravity. So minus a equals mu sub k, which is 0.1 times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So go ahead and plug this in here, 0.1 times 9.8, right? And then if we move the minus sign to the other side, A is going to be equal to minus uh, 0.98, right? So minus 0.98 meters per second squared. So now we know the acceleration, right? And so keep in mind, that's what we needed in order to actually go ahead and solve for delta x. So now we have acceleration, we have V, and we have V sub 0. So we can solve for delta x. Right, so the Kamak equation we're going to use is v squared equals v sub zero squared plus 2a times delta x, right? So this is just one of the Kamak equations, and the reason we're using it is because we have all the variables. We have v, v sub zero, right, right here, and then a, and we can solve for delta x, right? So review Kamak if you're not too sure on how this works, but essentially, right, let's just start plugging in. So v is zero, zero squared is still zero. Zero equals v sub zero squared. So keep in mind, v sub zero is uh, written in kilometers per hour. So we actually need it in meters per second, right? Because this is in meters per second squared. So let's go ahead and convert that. So 50 kilometers, right? Let me write it up here. 50 kilometers per hour. We know that for every hour, right? One hour is the same as 60 minutes, right? So that cancels the hours, but we don't want it in minutes. We want it in seconds. So one minute is the same as 60 seconds. So that'll cancel out the minutes. And then we know one kilometer right, we put it on the bottom because it's on the top, is equal to 1,000 meters. So that'll cancel out the kilometers, right, and then we'll just have meters over seconds, which is what we want. So you do 50, right, you do 50 times 1,000, right, and then divide by basically 3,600 because 60 times 60 is 3,600. And when you do that, you're going to get it equals 13.88 uh, and so on, right, and so I'm just going to round to 13.89 and then meters per second. So we know the initial velocity, right, is 13.89 meters per second, right? And so now we can just plug it in, right? Because it's in the correct units. So 13.89 squared uh, plus two times A, we know A is minus 0.98 multiplied by delta X. So if I minus this, right? I'm minus it to the other side. So minus 13.89 squared is equal to two times minus 0.98 
times delta x. Then we divide by this to get delta x by itself, right? Because that's what we're solving for. 2 times minus 0.98, right? So go ahead and do this. Minus 13.89 uh, squared, then divide by 2 times minus 0.98. And when you do that, you'll get delta x is equal to 98.4347 and so on. You can round however you want. I'm going to round down. So 98.4. Right, so 98.4, and then the units are going to be meters, right? Because this is distance, and we use meters for our distance unit. So this, the minimum stopping distance, right? Because this is going to be the maximum acceleration experience, right? Because this is the coefficient of kinetic friction. So it's going to be 98.4 meters. That's going to be uh, the, the, the minimum stopping distance. So if, if it slams on the brakes, right, this is the slowest we could stop it. So this is your answer to A. And so B is essentially asking for the same thing, except for... Uh, the coefficient of friction is now changed, right? So uh, this one we're going to go through a bit quicker because I'm not going to explain the whole thing again. But essentially, right, some of the forces in the x equals ma, right? ma is equal to minus f sub f again, right, because it's the only force, right? And then, right, we know f sub f equals mu sub k times f sub n, right? And so minus ma is equal to f sub f, right, which is mu sub k times f sub n, right? Plug in mg for both of these, or this is mg, uh, those cancel. Minus a is equal to mu sub k times g, right? So the only thing changing is the acceleration here. So a is going to be equal to uh, mu sub k now is 0.6. So you do 0.6, right? 0.6 times uh, g, which is 9.8. So a is going to be equal to a minus, right, because of the minus. 0.588, right? This makes sense intuitively, right? The acceleration is going to be faster, or it's gonna, we're going to decelerate much faster because the coefficient of friction is so much greater, right? We have a huge, a greater force acting this way, so we'll be able to slow down uh, or stop much quicker, right? So this is in meters per second squared. So now we have a, right? And so keep in mind the initial velocity is the same, so we can actually just use the same formula and plug in. So v squared equals v sub zero squared plus two a times delta x. V is the final velocity. We're still coming to a stop, so it's still zero. Zero squared is still zero. Equals V sub zero. 13.89 is the same. Plus two times A, which is minus 5.88. Right, and then divide by delta X. So all we got to do is minus this to the other side and then divide by this. So minus 13.89 squared is equal to delta X. And then I'm just dividing by this. So divide by two point minus 5.88. Right, so plug this in your calculator, 13.89 squared. Right, the minus signs are going to cancel, so just divide that by 2 times 5.88. And if you go ahead and do that, here, give me a second. Right, when you do that, you're going to get 16 point, uh, right? So delta x equals 16.4057 and so on. I'm just going to round to 16.4. So about 16.4 and then it's meters again, right? So notice we can stop way quicker because uh, the coefficient of friction is greater, right? So uh, the answer to B, 16.4 meters. Your answer to A was 98.4 uh, meters. But yeah, so these are going to be your two stopping distances. And yeah, hopefully you found this useful.